Excuse me. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's surreal to kind of be here in this kind of situation, um, and yet I trust and have faith that God is present with us, and um, happy to be here this morning. So, I have a question, um, and you know, you can raise your hands in your uh, homes if. Uh, if, if this describes you as well. But is anyone else feeling a little bit scared right now? <laughs> a little anxious? Yeah. I mean, it, and it, it's perfectly understandable, right? There are, there are all kinds of things to be scared of right now. Um, illness, uh, even death, uh, financial instability, um, you know, running out of toilet paper and having to resort to extreme measures. Um, and it's um, it's okay to be afraid. That's one thing I want to share this morning. It's okay to be afraid. It's okay to feel what you feel. Those, those nightmares about what happens when you pull the final square off the TP roll, right? Those are 100% real. Uh, but in the midst of the fear, uh, and by the grace of God, um, my goal today is to be able to offer a word of hope, um, and not a naive hope, you know, that comes from ignoring things that are legitimately frightening, um, but a deeper hope that is born out of facing our fear, acknowledging it, even entering into it directly. Uh, and so today, together in the virtual company of friends, um, <clears throat> I invite you to enter fear directly with me and see what's there. <clears throat> so we, we are not the first people to face a pandemic. Um, in fact, in the ancient world, without the, the scientific and technological advances of the last century or so, uh, pandemics occurred with alarming regularity. Um, and, and what do you think was the most common response. It was fear. Fear and shunning. Um, of Roman times, historian Howard Haggard says, when pandemics broke out, the Romans often fled in fear and left the sick to die without care. The Romans saw helping a sick person as a sign of human weakness. So sick people were, were often ostracized and were stigmatized. They inspired fear and hatred. They were avoided, left to themselves, because they were seen as weak or dispensable. Um, and, and I want to stop here and say there is a certain logic in this. And there is a there is a certain logic in saying to a person with an infectious disease, especially in a time with no doctors or medications or cures, you know, stay over there, even if it means you die alone. You could almost even make a moral case for it if you were trying. You could, you could almost even say, you know, we have to operate on a principle of the greatest good for the greatest many. We, we have to sacrifice the weak for the benefit of the rest of us. It's, it's unfortunate, it's sad, but as a society, our survival is at stake, and it's a terrible and difficult call we have to make, and that's what we have to do. So enter into the fear. See it, like like walking into a dark haze. And what do we see? We see the sick. We see the prospect of dying. And how might we respond? Well, it's each person for him or herself. It's, it's survival of the fittest. The, the logic is clear and the call is seductive. Run away. Run away from the source of danger. Run far, far away, and live to fight another day. <clears throat> but you know who, who resisted an impulse such as this? There was a, a strange, small, countercultural group that emerged in the shadow of the Roman Empire called Christians. And they were, <clears throat> they were very odd people. They were very strange. They, they were actually known as atheists because they refused to worship the pantheon of Roman gods and instead worship just one god, 
uh, invisible and all-powerful, they said had been revealed in a peasant named Jesus. And, and these Christians, if you can believe it, said that Jesus, a nobody from a backwater town called Nazareth, who had been executed by the Roman state in the most humiliating way possible for treason, was the deepest, most profound revelation of this all-powerful God the world had ever seen. <clears throat> They even went so far as to say that, that this was the incarnation of God himself. And, and it was completely ludicrous, right? As if any self-respecting God would allow himself to die. But it did make them different. Because these Christians worshipped this strange God who died upon a cross, they had, they had a moral code that flew in the face of the Roman Empire. And when pandemic struck, instead of running away from the sick and the dying, they ran toward them. While, while Roman authorities fled outbreaks, Christians entered the homes of those infected, tended to them, and cared for them, whether they were Christians or not. They entered the fear. In the dark, terrifying heaven. And you know what they saw there? They saw Jesus. They saw Jesus himself. They saw Jesus in the faces of the sick and dying. They saw Jesus in the bodies of the infected. They saw Jesus in the most vulnerable, the most reviled, the most feared. And they entered the fear and Jesus was with them there, and because he was there with them, they didn't turn away. And you know what came out of that? So, so modern nursing and hospitals owe themselves to the radical ethic of care embodied by these early Christians. Without them, we would not have our modern health care system. We, we would not have the inherent value of every life as a principle. Our society attempts, albeit not always successfully, to honor. Mm -hmm. And another thing happened. Um, even though some of these caregivers died as a result of their selfless ministry to those most vulnerable, Christianity spread like wildfire. People were astonished at the depth of love that could produce such radical care, and they wanted to be a part of that. They saw the beauty of a life lived for the sake of the neighbor, and they wanted that for themselves. So this Lent, we've been exploring and talking about everyday gospel rhythm, uh, in which we um, explore ways we live out our discipleship to Jesus Christ each day. Um, and today's rhythm is blessed. Uh, as Christians, we are blessed uh, to be a blessing, uh, and we both receive blessing um, from others, and we share it. But the question I want to ask you today is, is what is the nature of this blessing? What is the nature of blessing? And, and we might be tempted to think of it in material terms, uh, wealth, or prosperity, or health, and, and these are blessings in you. And to the extent we have them, we are called to share them. But the heart of Christian blessing is much more radical. Jesus says it himself in today's gospel reading. He says, to those who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Because it's easy to, to, to love and to do good and to bless and pray for those whose existence uh, is convenient for to us, or, or who benefit us in some way. <clears throat> but Jesus reminds us that this is inadequate. He says, if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? If you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? And if you lend from those whom, from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? He says, even sinners do those things. But, love your enemies. 
do good to them, lend to them without expecting to get anything back. This is what it means as Christians to walk in the everyday rhythm of bless. To bless the people who don't deserve it. To bless the people who can't pay us back. To bless the people who don't contribute to our economy, to bless the people who are sick or might otherwise pose a threat to our physical or financial well-being. To bless those most on the margins, most unable to care for themselves, most hated, most reviled, most feared, just like those early Christians cared for the sick in the time of pandemics even at great personal risk to themselves. Oh, my sisters and brothers in Christ, you've probably heard that we're blessed to be a blessing, and it's true. But please do not misunderstand the nature of Christian blessing. A blessing is nothing more or less than that which occurred in our baptism. When we were baptized into the death of Jesus Christ in order to be raised to his new life. Our blessing, therefore, is to daily die to ourselves and to our own self-interest so that we can run toward our neighbors, especially the most marginalized. For so did Christ. Does it sound scary? <laughs> yeah, it is scary. But, but the truth is we're already here. By virtue of our baptism, we have already entered into fear, into death itself. And here we have discovered the most glorious secret. God is here with us. This is the meaning of the cross of Jesus, and during Lent, as we journey toward the cross together, there is no better time to remember it. And so, please, I beg of you this morning, always remember, during this very difficult time, when we stay home to avoid spreading the disease to others, we are blessed to be a blessing, and Jesus is there. When we worship online to, to show solidarity for those who are most at risk, we are blessed to be a blessing, and Jesus is there. He is here with us on this live stream. When, when we find ourselves in the midst of sudden unemployment or economic disruption because businesses are closed in order to preserve the lives of others, we are blessed to be a blessing, and Jesus is there in, in the doctor's offices in the emergency rooms, in the ICUs, in, in the drive through testing centers where brave women and men put themselves at risk every single day. We are blessed to be a blessing. And Jesus is there. When a delivery driver brings food, when a grocery store worker restocks the shelves, when a caretaker looks after children, so that essential workers can work, we are blessed to be a blessing. And Jesus is there. And when we are sick and alone and uncertain and afraid, we are blessed to be a blessing. And Jesus is there. And so this morning I invited you to enter into fear to see what's here, and it doesn't mean you won't feel afraid when you face it. But look closer. See the darkness and the haze? What do you see? It's Jesus. Jesus is there. Jesus is here. And we are not alone, but he is with us forever. Amen. Mm. <laughs>